What's going on, beautiful people? Thank you for returning back to my channel, The Root Wave. In this episode, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about ascension and crystal healing. Um, I have my guest here, Donna, with me. Please say hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Esteban. Hello. So, um, if you could just tell us a little bit about what you do and how we can find you, please. Okay, so my name is Jana, and I am a spiritual coach or an ascension coach, as some choose to call me. And I work with people to help them get more spiritual, discover themselves, and become more aware of the world that's around them and how to be more peaceful. You can find me on Instagram at Jana Zen. That's Z H A N N A Z E N. Jana Zen. Okay, so I'll be putting that information on the video as well and all the information below. So that way anyone interested in reaching out can uh, have that information easily accessible. So now um, I'm going to start this with just talking about how I met you. Um, <laughs> so uh, you happen to be my neighbor. <laughs> ah. And I was, um, I don't, I, I want to tell the story because I, now that I'm into spirituality, I don't believe in coincidences. So um, I felt that at the time that I moved upstairs from you, it was during a time that a lot of stuff was happening, a lot of changes, a lot of, I guess, if I look at it now in retrospect, it was the planets pushing me to go do something like, hey, get your shit together, go do stuff, <laughs> you know, like, like, let's, let's get this going, right? Because it was a time of a lot of confusion. It was new. There was a lot of energy, a lot of um, thoughts going in my head, um, doubt, um, motivation. It's just, it was... It was just everywhere, right? Um, and then I ended up meeting you. And then um, you were doing something that now people tell me that I do, which is I deal with everything very calmly, right? Like there's just like oh, this, okay. <laughs> there's just this, I guess, zen about you. Like just, just like, so it's funny because um, now that I have friends that I try to, um, at least I, I don't try to coach them, but I try to get them into meditation and stuff like just to, the, the baby steps of like how I started to. Um, but a lot of them go, wow, I didn't know you did this. Um, that makes so much sense why you'd be at work and everybody's like flipping out and you're just like, what am I going to do, right? Um, so when yeah. I met you, you were like that and I decided... Um, I don't know, I guess to open up to you and just be like, hey, this is going on. And then like, who knew that you would be like sending me information, um, enlightening me, guiding me. Um, and then pretty much now we're up to the coaching stage where um, I'm heavily into this. And then you are just making sure that I'm going in the right track, which is great and fantastic. And I really appreciate that. That's why I have you here. But also you're great at what you do. Um, but I, I don't believe in coincidences, and I thought that was amazing that that happened. I'm very grateful for it. You know that I'm always grateful for you as well because I'm always like, if it wasn't for you, I mean, you know, like sometimes I picture that. I'm like, if I didn't move to that apartment, what would life be like right now, right? So it's a big, it's a big moment in my life that I'm never going to forget, and I think that's amazing. And I hope that people that are watching this are going to experience the same thing with whoever they, with whatever they end up doing and if they end up, whoever they end up meeting uh, in, in down the road, right? So let's start off with um, Ascension. Yes. If you could please just explain that. And I, and I guess you always do a great job explaining anyway, but um, just, I know that there's going to be people watching this and going to be like, what the hell are they talking about? Yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> so going on? please. Well, the cool thing is, is that everyone's going to have their own definition of it and everyone's going to kind of relate to different ways of understanding it. But in short and overall, uh, what's happening with the planet is that we're going through a spiritual shift and it's a shift in awareness. It's an emotional shift within and we're all just growing to be more of aware of who we are as a soul having a human experience. So uh, for a lot of people, it's they will call it connecting to God stronger on their own. For a lot of people, it'll be the definition of finding their highest self within. But whatever it is, it's all leading to understanding yourself as a whole and feeling more healthy and less stress and just more calm. And also the ability to attract more things that support your journey while, as you're on it. Right. So how does someone... When I started this process, I didn't know, oh, I'm going through ascension. 
Um, yeah, yeah. You kind of just go through a whole bunch of stuff. What is there a way to give you, and I guess I'll give you an example as well, but I'll, I'll let you go first. What, is there like examples or something that may be happening in someone's life that someone can say, oh, that's why that's happening to me? <laughs> Um, so a very common theme for people is actual health ailments that the doctors cannot find explanations for. So people will have headaches or kidney pains or something like that, and they will go and they will get every test, every CAT scan, and the doctors go, oh, you're fine. You can go back home. But the person comes back home and they're like, I'm not fine. I'm in pain. There's something more to this. So that kind of is a starting point for a lot of people. It has to get so bad and so mysterious, but also so motivating for someone to want to actually t keep taking the next step and like trying to find the next answer step by step. Um, for others, it'll be work related. For some um, other people, it'll be romantic relationship related, but whatever it is, um, people come to this point where they can no longer find answers in the, the belief systems and the structures that they usually would go for support. So they have to start thinking outside the box and then the universe just starts sending like one little clue at a time and they're like, Oh, okay, this makes sense. And then the little, the new alternative ways also start working for people. So that kind of keeps them, um, confirmed and assured inside that, okay, this is what's going on. Right. Well, um, just to share a little bit of how it started for me, <laughs> um, a lot of, lot of turmoil happening in my life that was just like, what? But the funny thing is that the turmoil was, I don't know, I guess working out because a lot of what was happening. Okay. Start from the beginning. I started with a lot of heavy meditation just to kind of relax myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't know that that would lead to, like I said, a lot of turmoil, a lot of just like uncertainty, just a lot of stuff happening in my brain. But then there came a point, I want to say January of this year, <clears throat> where I ended up having severe uh, pain. Um, I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, I ended up in an NYU hospital. I, like, I was sitting in NYU, like, crying. Like, I was like, I'm going to die. You know, I'm 30-something I'm years old. Um, I've never felt this. You Google it and all. It's like, you're dying. <laughs> you're having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, never Google. Yeah. <laughs> or because or maybe was... include the word ascension in your Google search. <laughs> right. So um, before I knew about that, um, I'm Googling, I'm running, and I'm still paying for my NYU bill, by the way, because of it. But um, it's it, it was a lot of pain. Um, it's, it, it started in my neck area. I started clenching my jaw. I was grinding my teeth that night, which I'm still doing a little bit of that. And I'm still feeling a, a little bit of the ascension pains. Um, I do a lot, actually. Maybe because it, it doesn't matter, like, the intensity or how long it lasts. Is that because you're, like, working at it constantly? or Kind of. You also have to check in with yourself and see if you've been using, one, the tools and um, seeking and addressing the underlying emotional and spiritual reasons behind it. Right. So, so every pain is typically going to have some kind of a backstory to it. And then when you tap into that emotional piece that kind of densified and turned into a pain is when the pain just kind of, you either find the right doctor or the right medical care provider, or it just goes away on its own. Right. So for me, it started on my neck, a lot of tension in the back of my head, um, came mm -hmm. down to my neck. Then I started to get, uh, my left arm would be numb. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like there was something heavy on my heart. You know, so and then it was almost like um, like a panic attack, anxiety attack. Um, and a lot of time it was happening at night. So then what I ended up doing is after the whole NYU thing, NYU checked my blood, EKG, X-ray. I mean, there was they did a little bit of everything. I was there for like six hours. They were just like because they were worried. They were like, you know, at your age, if you're having this, yeah. it happens. It can. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Went home, okay. still freaking out. They sent me with, um, I think, pen, pain medication, like some heavy stuff, maybe, maybe even Percocet. I don't remember what it was, but I don't like taking medication. So I had to go through it. The pain started to dissipate a little bit once I feel like I Googled, um, I don't know. I ran into the whole Ascension pain thing and then I Googled that and I was like, holy shit, this is everything that I'm going through. Um, this is crazy. Next, yeah. after that happened, heavy meditation, heavy into my crystals, and then I noticed that it would dissipate a little bit. Um, but then the next pain was, it almost felt like your cranium is just like stretching out, your ears are popping. It's like, it's weird. And I, and I still go yeah. through some of it. It's not like, now it's just like, oh, I know what it is. But um, before it was freaking me out. Um, yeah. 
you're saying that not necessarily everyone will face that pain, but that yeah, it varies. For some people, it might come um, like once every three months on a full moon or something, or maybe <laughs> on a random day. Um, for others, it'll be like a period of like three weeks or something. Um, so it, it really does vary because we all have a different, um, um, like a different karmic background, karmic template. So we're sh for one, we're shedding through this, and for two, we're also being like reshaped, so to say, energetically to be ready for the new energy that's on the planet. So right. So it, um, now, do, does ascension happen to everyone, or is there something that you have to trigger and you have to create in order for that to happen? Um. Uh. Well, um, I feel like at this point on the planet, most people will be going through some some form of it. But there are there will be souls who still choose not to ascend and will still choose to live in a density. And it's kind of like our job to observe that, which can be tough when they're like family members or close friends. So um, there's really no judgment or no expectation in that. So it is possible for some people to choose to not do it. But majority, I think, at this point will start kind of going through the domino effect and shifting over. What would be a negative effect of somebody going through ascension and not having any type of spirituality or any type of anything going on? Um, I think that just the timeline of it would lengthen. It would take them longer and they might just have more like either physical ailments, ailments or life life-shaking events, career-related, relationship-related. So it's almost like you have, if your soul says, okay, you're ready to ascend kind of thing, you have two routes, which is the old paradigm route, and you get to experience it through what's called duality, which is good and bad. So you can experience it through heavy experiences, or you can choose like the new paradigm way, which is called the 5D perception. Um, and you get to use awareness, and tangible work and spiritual tools to kind of shed it quicker and lighter. So, um, without awareness of it, it just, it's a, it's a tougher process and longer. So I recently, um, quit my job, <clears throat> which, you know, um, I am <laughs> working somewhere in healthcare because of a friend just per diem, just to oh. make sure that I can stay afloat. But I do notice cause I deal with patients now. I do mm. notice that they come in, and I'm talking about kids from age 12 to 17, okay? Okay. That are coming in, and I'm talking about in a good amount, good amount, because I deal with them. Mm -hmm. And to me, they're all coming in with ascension pains. <laughs> oh, because, totally, yeah. Because yeah. they leave, and there's nothing wrong. That like, what? There's no, they all have the exact same symptoms that I had. <laughs> They all have the same symptoms. They come in. These are young kids. I'm and and then um I work in a in a pediatric setting, but pediatrics can go up to the age of twenty six by law here in New York. Mm, okay. So you have these kids that are coming, and also nineteen, twenty, twenty two. We don't get too many of them, but the ones that do, same thing. Like they're going through the same exact thing. They they're freaking out. Um. They, the doctor's like, no, you know, maybe you're just uh, stressed and maybe you're just having anxiety. Here's like, you know, um, some type of anxiety medication or whatever. But could I be right <laughs> in the fact you're that, very this, right. that these yeah. people are coming in um, with so these Aside pain? from spiritual work, I've been in the medical field with direct patient contact, direct patient coaching, so forth. For almost 10 years and yeah all every physical pain has some type of a karmic shedding background to it there's no coincidence uh, for children in particular it's a little different because a lot of the new children they just come in wired a little more ready for the new world yeah. and what they're actually doing is they're they're bringing in the energy for us to anchor it here so a lot of times, you know, we look at the new kids and we're like, oh, they're so hyperactive. Oh, my God, nothing works for this kid. Or they're just so different. They're like, they're not like we were when we were little. But there's a reason for that. And they're actually doing a very, very sacred spiritual job of just like anchoring that and taking on the, the tough pains and the symptoms and so forth. Because they basically come in as a like a higher vibrational being to a world full of density. So for them, it's, it's there, they will experience a lot of distortion and pains if they're not supported by their parents. And most of the times they won't be the way they need to be because the parents aren't even aware of these things. 
So, um, but for you, it's going to be pretty tough to observe that in the medical field because you see it, you know it, but you can't say anything because you, you you know you can't suggest this kind of stuff. Right. It? So I've yeah. had, I've had <laughs> so some, good luck. Yeah. Well, no, I've had. Yeah. I have to tell you three. Uh, it, it happened to me with three people at a job, mm-hmm. right? Where they were between the ages of seventeen and twenty-two. <clears throat> And I had an opportunity to just just shoot the shit with them a little bit. Just be like, hey, you know, whatever, you know. And then I was kind of like, hey, psst. I didn't say anything about spirituality. But I was like, hey, I went through the same thing nine months ago, okay? I went through the same thing nine months ago. And all I started doing was just, so this is what I, I suggested to them, right? I'm like, okay. what I started doing was making sure my stress levels were, were, were healthy, Making sure my posture was healthy. Making sure me sitting on my desk, all the the dynamics of how I'm sitting. What is it called? The er- ergodynamics? I, f- I forgot what it's called. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Just make sure that's <laughs> that <works. laughs> good. And then I would just throw in that I just started meditating. Yeah, that's, that, that's like socially acceptable. And then that's it. Do some deep breathing, something like that. Yeah. But I have to say that out of the three that I spoke to, Two mm-hmm. of them, as I'm telling them these things, it was like light bulbs going off. Like, yeah, kind yeah. of like I, they wouldn't tell me what was going on, but they would just say, "Listen, I feel so much better that you told me that." Just because, yeah, yeah, just, they're just not heard, right? Just they're because I I know that you said something that makes sense to me, so I'm gonna go work on Absolutely. that. Absolutely, and I was like. Yes, you know, like great. Um, but you brought up a good point that we're talking about the kids. Now, I have a daughter who, um, coincidentally, yesterday, um, I was talking to her mother. Her mother's like, "Yeah, I got into a little spat with your daughter." Then I go into her room to ask her, like, "Do you want to talk?" And then when I go in, she's like, "Mom, can we talk in about five minutes? I'm finishing up my meditation." <laughs> which is funny because i really haven't and now i'm inspired to really teach her i've been just yeah. kind of giving it to her in doses because i'm scared of how that will she's still developing she's only gonna she's gonna be 11 so yeah, um, yeah i feel like i don't want to taint it too much but mm-hmm. what is a good what is a good what's good advice for somebody that's watching this such as myself that believes in this and wants to make sure that their kids have some type of guidance, what would be a good suggestion to to help our children, especially the ones like under the age of 18? Yeah. um, So I would say there are two books that are just absolute must reads uh, written by the same author. And I don't remember her name, but the books are called The Children of Now. And um, I think The Children of Now Ascension. If I'm correct. No, the children of now evolution. Um, And they really describe all the different types of these new children because there there are different names for them. The names don't really matter. They're more of like descriptions. So some some of them are indigo. Some of them are crystal children. Some of them are rainbow children. It's just different ways of um, describing the type of light that they carry within. Mm -hmm. So that book is just both of those books are just amazing and providing like little techniques But before the books, I would say it's really important to hear your children out and really listen to what they're saying and ask them how they feel about things and also not shame them for the things that they express to you. So let's say if your five-year-old is telling you that there's a unicorn in her closet, um, you better ask about the unicorn. What color is the tail? What, you know, what did it tell you and so forth? Because the children are coming in with all these new type of awareness abilities. And when they, it's so very real to them. Um, So between the visions that they get or the health ailments that they have, so they feel it and they know in their body that it's a hundred percent right. But then when they see a figure of authority, a parent, a doctor, anybody say something like, Oh no, that's fine. You know, that that's not really real. That doesn't exist. You're fine. You don't, you're not sick. That doesn't really hurt. Mm-hmm. What happens is it creates a sense of confusion and it instills shame. Mm-hmm. Um, and shame is actually like the worst vibration we can carry within. And then the child doesn't feel like they can express themselves and just the whole entire energy gets distorted for them to go further and they can actually generate more illness. So it's very important for the children to just feel like they're heard and supported through the process and also um, asking them open-ended questions. That's another good one. 
just letting them talk and making sure that they feel honored as a as a little soul doing its work. Right. Is it a good idea to teach them meditation and get them into like crystal healing? Um, so of course that varies by the parent. So you can't, uh, that's kind of like religion, you know, is it good to tell your kid about Jesus? Who knows? Um, it, 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 it will vary family by family. I, if I, if, and, or when I have children, I will absolutely tell my kids about this. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, just like with any other person, you have to tell them and you have to see if it's something that's of interest to them because you will have kids right, or have friends with kids. Uh, friends who are healers whose kids totally don't care about any of this uh, because they already own it within so they don't need to know the techniques they don't need to know which crystal to use for x y and z so you really just have to honor them as little humans and just see what their response is but if you see their little eyes just light up and yeah. like oh really i can use this to help me study okay then you're like all right sure why not um but yeah, and also, you know, there are certain things that come, little responsibilities that come along with crystals and stuff as far as clearing and charging them. So I feel like if a parent is to introduce their child to crystals, they absolutely must take clearing and charging the crystals seriously because you don't want the kid to re keep recycling the energy. So just if you're taking it serious, just take it all the way serious. Right. So I'd like to get into the crystal healing, but I just wanted to um, follow up with one question before we move mm -hmm. on. And that's. Is this is this happening now? You're talking about the high higher vibration. Is this happening because of planetary alignments and the energy in the universe that it, like it's like now's the time certain things clicked into certain points <laughs> where we're getting? Because I have yeah. um, nieces who are under the age of two. Right, one is one, another one I think is going to be three soon. But I just feel like their energy and and like I said, I deal with kids on a regular basis now. So I just mm -hmm. look at them and I'm like, who are these children? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> They're amazing. Yeah. There's like this energy. You're that, you know what I'm saying? Like I just feel it. I see it. You know, like there's something yeah. that I don't see in our generation, in the generations prior. There's just so much just ah, it's just beautiful stuff. But is this because uh the universe is saying now's the time, let's send these this energy down? Yeah. So I, I believe the whole children of now type of terminologies uh if we use that that started like in the 60s but you would get like a baby here a baby there but now it's just most of them are coming in but yeah um once we were, after 2012 is when this spiritual shift ascension process started so really babies that are born like especially after 2012 are gonna most likely carry a very different type of energy and um if you really take time to connect with them you really see that oh <laughs> they're God, like yes. they're cool it's <laughs> amazing now i hear a lot of people talking about this 2012 what mm -hmm. happened in 2012 that shifted everything um so 2012 was the end of the mayan calendar right so uh publicly i guess what were people calling like the armageddon and no one knew what was going to happen um but it was just an end of a 26,000 year cycle. Um, so the same way we have 30 day cycle or so 30 day cycles, um, that's a month for us or a year. And we kind of feel a shift when a new year comes in or a new month starts so forth. This was just the end of a 26,000 year cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really the time for us to kind of start working on ourselves and returning to our original selves. Well, that's what happened to me. It was like 2012 when everything just 2012, 2013 like just everything started yeah yeah around there some yeah. some people started a little before a little after but like the cusp really kind of yeah like like if i were to be able to sit i if i were to sit next to my 2011 per self i would be like a totally yeah. different person like i i even now i can't even remember who that person was because it's just been like it's been a journey. It's been a really like, it's yeah, real it, work. At, at the end of my days, I'm going to be very happy to know that I was here during this time <laughs> and the work that I put in. Yeah. You know I mean, like yeah. it's, it's amazing that that whole energy is just, it's just good stuff. Um, so now let's get into the crystals, right? Um, yeah. let's, for the people that are watching that have no clue, let's, let's explain it to them a little bit, please. <laughs> okay, so crystals are, um, they look like rocks, but they're fancier. They come from Earth most of the time, except for some are lab made, and they carry a lot of uh, minerals within them. So, as you can see, like I have a bunch of different ones on my wrists. I wear them as bracelets. I carry the little pebbles and so forth. And I'm sure Esteban has, you have yours with you? 
All right. Okay. So um, each type of crystal carries a different type of vibration. And what that means is um, they will do a different type of job or they can do a different type of job depending on what their metaphysical properties are based on their color and their, um, I guess, like chemical composition. And what happens with crystals is if we have um, if we have them in our energy fields, in our auras, or close to us, or on us, they will allow us to what's called entrain to their frequency. So when we entrain to something, we have we have two objects, one of a higher frequency, one of a lower. So when the definition of entrainment is that the one object of the lower frequency will rise up and get pulled up to the object of the higher frequency. So that's kind of what happens with crystals, especially when they're cleansed and charged, you vibe up to the frequency. So for example, um, if you want to improve your intuition, you can use a crystal that's specified for that. And it, your like your personal vibration, your personal properties will just kind of like rise up to match the properties of that crystal with uh, either while you're carrying it or after you use it enough times to just kind of become of that same nature. Mm -hmm. How long have we as humans been using crystals that you know of? Oh, thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah awesome. ancient texts, you can, you know, you, you can start looking through them thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, right. it goes way back. So how does someone start using these crystals? What's a good way to start? Um, you can contact someone who's a retailer and ask, tell them what you're going through and allow them to recommend what they think is, would be a fitting start for you. Or you can go to a crystal shop or like a crystal website and just see what one just catches your eye first, mm -hmm. because we're all intuitive beings, even if we don't know that we are. So there's going to be something that you subconsciously know you need from that crystal that calls you. Nice. So the coolest thing, I think the coolest thing to do is just to go that route, see what calls you, get it, and then read up the properties later to see what was it about it that really called you in. So in that way you get to explore your own intuition and your own inner knowing. Okay, so I go into a crystal shop, I see this crystal that I love, and I'm like, whoa, it's talking to me, right? Because that's that's kind yeah. of how it works. Right? I mean, once that's you get into it, you're like, oh, that's it. You know, even if there's one right next to it, it looks like it, you're like, no, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you'll know which one is yours most of the time. Yeah. So, so how do we start using it? So now we get it. How do we start using it? How do we clean it? How do we recharge it? What's what's a good uh, a good way to doing that? Yeah. So the number one, uh, let's call it crystal hygiene. Um, it's very important to always cleanse and charge your crystals because crystals carry energy. So you don't want to pick up anybody else's, you know, juju mm -hmm. when you get your crystals. So there are several methods that include maybe putting them in salt out in the sun. But those methods have restrictions. There are certain crystals you can do that with, cannot. I advise to use or a bowl of raw organic brown rice and just sticking your crystals after use in there for anywhere between one hour to 12 hours to cleanse them. Um, that works on any crystal, gentle, non-gentle, the salt, you don't have to worry about it deteriorating, the sun, you don't have to worry about your, you know, your crystal losing color or anything like that. And then to charge it, which is to infuse it, you know, with healthy vibes and make it more powerful again, the same way you would charge a cell phone. Uh, with crystals, you would put it out in moonlight, preferably full moons or new moons, because they're very, very potent, and uh, and your crystals are ready to use. Now, um, if you want to charge them like every day as an ongoing thing, if you're an everyday crystal user, you might want to invest in on either a selenite plate, which is another type of crystal. It's white and it's very high frequency, or like a selenite log, but basically a larger piece of selenite. So then, after your crystals are cleansed, you can just take them out of the cleansing bowl and place them on the selenite for a few hours to charge. Now, what if you just have like this? How would I charge uh, it? Is that a selenite stick? Because I have, I have you yeah. in a little window. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> selenite stick. Selenite um, stick. Um, that might be okay to charge a few little crystals with, but uh, to really have like a little station, you might want to get a plate or like a log. Very cool. All right. Well, now let's say... Um, Actually, you know what? I'm going to ask you, what's your top three favorite crystals? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. 
Uh, tough one. Okay, so I would have to say selenite because it's just so multi-purpose. Mm -hmm. um, it charges other crystals, so you know it makes your everyday life easier. It is great for pain relief, and it's great for meditation, cleansing your energy, as well as protecting with the help of like higher frequencies. Um, so I like that one for uplifting and cleansing and charging. Um, I love Jet because I feel like that's one of the strongest shielding crystals out there. A lot of people say black tourmaline. They're similar, but I feel like Jet is just a little more shielding, whereas black tourmaline is more like a detoxer. Mm. Um, Jet is also good if you have any kind of infections or anything like that. You can place it on wherever you need to, and it'll like pull the energy out. And um, I would say anything pink. <laughs> in the lab for the last year because I really like the heart chakra stones and they're really to just uh, make you feel more peaceful enhance love expand your heart center and just you know happy vibes everyone gets along um, the first like the love 101 stone is usually rose quartz so that's a good one to start with um, so yeah although I feel like that's a starting stone it might still be one of my favorites mm -hmm. Well, this has been, yeah. um, when it comes to crystals and everything, it's been great because I've been studying my butt off, like, um, mm. studying for a final. <laughs> All right. But, but the yeah, thing is... Yeah, for some people that works great. And yeah. for others, it'll be like, I don't know why none of this information retains until I actually use it. So yeah. it's great that you can actually study it, study it, and it stays with you. Right. Well, the other thing that I, and I brought up in another interview that I did, but I, I want to bring this up every time we have some type of discussion when it comes to um, energy, spirituality, all that stuff. I think one of the things that, um, and I'm glad that I overlooked it, but uh, one thing that happens is you try to be very human and look for like, a guide like a instruction book on crystals and uh, ascension yeah. and even though there's people like you that are guiding and helping what i'm noticing just in, in speaking with other people going through a lot of this stuff is that the only way this feels right is when you make it yours Right. Yeah. And you're not. And, and I remember. I remember when I started. I'd be like, "Hey, how do you do this? How do you work this? How do you?" Do this? <laughs> <laughs> but then you like, don't. You don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then you, you just kind of, kind of make it your own. And there's no. Yeah. There's really no wrong way necessarily. But you know, don't be too fixed on the fact that you're like, "Am I doing this right? Um, did I get the right thing? Did I do this? Did I? Am I thinking the right yeah. way? Did I meditate enough? Um, all this other stuff. But I think. It, it, do you agree that it's a good suggestion that you know just. You got to make it yours. You got to go with the flow of what's happening, fix things as they go, and just keep working at it and learning, right? Absolutely, because that's what the whole point of Ascension is. It's all about connecting all your pieces of you together. So when you make it yours, you're really honoring the answers that you're already getting from within or, you know, from the universe, and then you're just using the backup books or, you know, the coaching, the guidance, and so for support and, like, a little bit of direction. But um, you absolutely are on a journey to fully understand and fully only need your own answers. Right, right. Well, I really appreciate your time. This was fantastic. I love it. Um, a, a big goal of mine is to kind of get this out there. Um, <sighs> just it helped me it's still helping me i don't know how i would have gone through life um without this <laughs> <laughs> well, thank but, you but i mean i must say if you wouldn't have come across me your you know your higher selves your spirit guide team they would have sent you someone else okay so you should never bypass that but i'm glad that it was me that you chose to be <laughs> on your path and to be of your assistance and it's really been great to guide you yeah it's been i'm very grateful um it's very awesome i can't wait to see what comes down the road and you're right i never thought of it like that that it, it would have it, it yeah the universe um, sent i mean someone. i love every <laughs> single person i get to assist but it's like we never we should never be in our ego to the point where we think that the person we're helping doesn't have enough like higher self god within to still direct them where they need to go mm -hmm. so um yeah, be Very sure cool. that one way or another you would have found your path. Maybe next year, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're right. You're right. Um, yes. So before, uh huh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just saying you were you were on your track. You you put it out there, and then it collided. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was a lot of that. I mean, I can literally write a book about it probably. But um, before we <laughs> leave, is there anything else in regards to what we've spoken about that you want to add? Um, I think you covered it all. Um, if anyone has any questions specifically for me, they can um, either find me via Instagram or email me. Um, and maybe we could, you know, do a follow up and just answer those as needed. But I think you really, uh, you really put out a nice little foundation there for people to yeah. start exploring. Would yeah. you, would you um, please give us that Instagram again? Absolutely. So on Instagram, my name is Jana Zen. It's Z H A N N A Z E N. And my email address is info at Jana Zen.com. So if you have any specific questions, feel free, reach out, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. So before we leave, like I do with all my guests, I usually ask them to leave me with some type of uh, motivational or inspirational uh, memento. So that way somebody's watching this can go about their day feeling great, feeling inspired, maybe motivating them to um, get started with something that uh, maybe they've been holding back, not sure of, confused about. Um, so go ahead, please. Okay. All right. So I would just like to let everyone know that whenever you know something that is a truth within to go ahead and explore and follow that truth and find your own answers, never let anyone telling you that that's not really true or that's not a society norm. Um, do not let that discourage you from discovering what you hear is your call or what you feel is something that needs to be worked on within yourself. There are so many healers, practitioners, even medical care providers or just supporters out there who you can call in and who will actually allow you to find the answers that you've been searching for. And I feel like the Internet's making it so available for everyone. So don't get uh, don't feel let down if the people in your immediate environment don't understand your struggles. Right. And there's a lot of us out here going through the spirituality, right? Like more than ever. Uh, yeah. And, you know, even the world spirituality, I feel like it's becoming so mainstream and people are maybe even misusing it sometimes. But at the end of the day, it's just really us understanding ourselves on a deeper level and letting go of the confusion and the pains. So. Um, you can call it spirituality, you can call it self-work, self-discovery, but I just feel like it still all falls under the same umbrella. All right, well, I appreciate your time. Love your energy. Thank you so much for everything. I really hey, appreciate it. Thank you so much for thank you so much for um, being on my channel. Uh, maybe we could do this again. I did love the fact that you said maybe if some people have questions, we could do a follow-up. That would be fantastic. I do yeah. appreciate it. I'll have all your information on the screen and on um, the comment section below. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you around. Peace. Bye, Bye everyone.